Bye. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, smoking. Look, look, swearing. Look, look. Oh, you've been warned. All right, because here I come in three. Look, look, two. Look, look, one. Bye. And welcome, everyone. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Look, look, we got a great one for you today. We are going to take a world tour. Yeah, so we're going to do a world tour of regulation today, brothers. So first, we're going to go to Europe. Bang! Yes. Looks like Europe might be bringing out a little Euro coin. Yeah. Yes. Look, look. Then we're going to head over on here to the U.S. Oh, yeah. Congress. Ha, <laughs> ha. This is the good news we need to hear. Congress is giving the CTFC crypto rules. Right? Oh, you motherfuckers don't want to regulate? Look, look. We're going to just fucking come out with laws and give it to you. Yes. Which is what we've been talking about, right? And then we're going to head over to Hong Kong. Oh, and this is the big news of the day. The big news of the day. Hong Kong regulates their crypto exchanges. Oh, yes. Right when China says, look, look. Hong Kong says, look, look. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's going down, brothers. That's going down, so let's get to it. Bye. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, let's proceed. Let's proceed. Look back. All right. Let's make sure everything is working. All right, good. Let's refresh. Refresh. Look, look, Bitcoin's at $9,379. And when I left you yesterday, it was at $9,332. So we went up a whole, was that, $57. All right. Look, look, mooning. <laughs> look, look, top 10 today, brothers. Usual suspects, brothers. Look, top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Tether, Litecoin, EOS, Binance Coin, Bitcoin SV, and Stellar. Let's look at market moves of the day, brothers. Look, look, single digits up, single digits down. What else is new? Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Look at you, V-Chain. All right. Single digits up, single digits down, too. Single digits up to single digits down. All right. It's look who lost money today. You see anything on here you like, you go get it because it is on sale. <laughs> Bang. All right. Look, look, top 10 losers of the day, brothers. Qcoin shares, Chili's, Educare, Nash Exchange, ABBC coin, Bitem, Crypterium, Swipe, Sycoin, and Decred. Let's look who made money today, brothers. Bye. Oh, there's some gains here today, brothers. Look. Top 10 wins of the day. Top 10 gainers. Dragon Coins, Algorand, Lambda, IXRLC, Nano, Centrality, Komodo, Bitcoin, Vchurn, and Quant. All right. Look, look, let's look at total mark cap of the day. Oh, yeah, 252.9. Mm -hmm. Total mark cap of the day, 252.9. And when I left you yesterday, we were at 251 even. So we went up $2.9 billion in total market cap. Uh, this is what I like to see right here. All right. So total volume of the day, $90.4 billion. So it looks like we're sticking around up here in the top. Hold on a second. I'll explain what I'm trying to say. $90.4 billion. And when I left you yesterday, it was $94.4 billion. So it went down $4 billion, but... I like it how, remember, we, I've, I've been saying it for the past few days, right? We were all in the 50000 or $50 billion range for a, pff, most of the year, right? And it's nice that we're nice, nicely in this, you know, in the 90s here right now. We're still sticking around here, so that's cool. Uh, just, you know, just a little observation of mine. It's no big deal, but, I mean, it just means more money is coming here to play on a daily basis, right? All right. Look, look, let's head on over to Europe. Bye. Yes. European Union drafts law suggesting consideration of a Eurocoin. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Things are heating up. 
China's coming out. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who else? Hold on. Anyway, yeah. So, let's check out what Europe's talking about. Bar. Excuse me. A draft document issued by the European Union suggests that the Union should consider issuing its own digital currency. Will the EU wage war on crypto? <laughs> Fuck, give me a break. Reuters reported on November 5th that the draft in question, which is still subject to amendment, so this is just a draft bill. Let me let me let me just make sure we, everybody knows where we are here. So it's a draft bill, and um, open for amendments means, you know, politicians can add and subtract to it still. So this isn't set in stone yet, but it's we're hearing what they're yap yapping about, what they're talking about, what the the debate is about, right? All right, you know, it's how you follow your democracy. Look, all right, uh, which is still subject to amendments, urges member states to develop a common approach to cryptocurrencies possibly banning high-risk projects. So, right, it, if we've talked about this before, that's what's going to have to go down in Europe and that's what's going to have to fucking go down here in America. Okay? Here in America, it, we, we have what's called a patchwork, you know, a patchwork regulatory regime, right? Each state has their own laws, right? If you want to operate in New York, you got to go with the NYDFS. If you want to operate in California, you got to get regulated some other way over there. You want to do something in Wyoming? You got to get regulated somewhere. That's why we need federal, central. <laughs> yes. But we like decentral. No, not in this case. We need central regulatory control so that the laws applies everywhere. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. And that's what Europe's saying, right? You know, France has their stuff going on. The Germans have their stuff. And, you know, look, let's just make a Europe-wide law with about crypto, right? Or laws, plural. <laughs> so if the draft in its current form is approved, which could happen as early as next month, bang, as early as next month. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Things are starting to heat up now. And I'm about to show you this legislator right here. I'm about to show you this guy in America right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Bye. Next month, maybe. It could happen as early as next month. It could have far-reaching consequences. More precisely, Reuters suggests, that such a law could escalate into a EU regulatory campaign against cryptocurrencies. Knock. I don't know about against. It's just going to regulate them. Settle down. Settle down. I hate these paranoid people. It could, it could, it could be an EU regulatory campaign against cryptocurrencies, or it could be a whole EU ca campaign where they're like China and they just release it all, right? Say that part of it, ah, right? They're always trying to scare you, right? Yeah, it also could go the other way, which it won't. It'll probably just be down the middle, you know, usual humdrum regula regulations, right? Don't let these guys scare you with their with their wording. It could be a ban, or, or it could be a full release. Say say that part too. All right. So European Central Bank to consider Eurocoin. All right, and this is the juice. This is where the juice is right here. The draft prepared by the Finnish EU presidency also suggests that the European Central Bank should consider issuing its own digital currency. Look, look. And it says the ECB and other EU central banks could usefully explore the opportunities as well as challenges of issuing central bank digital currencies, including by considering concrete steps to this effect. Uh -huh. So, under consideration. The draft will be discussed this Friday, and a perspective on its adoption will be presented on December 5th. All right, where are we at? All right, so one month's time. We're on, it's the 6th of uh, November, December 6th. All right. So, as Cointelegraph reported, in a dedicated analysis in late September, 
Europe's digital currency is being increasingly seen as an answer to Facebook's Libra stablecoin. All right, look. So there we go. Europe considering Europe-wide laws for crypto, which is what you need. All right. And and uh, and maybe their own little euro coin. Look, look, good stuff for Europe. Bye now. Let's check out America. Bye now. Here in America, we've got a whole other problem. We've got a bunch of regulators that just don't want to regulate. Just don't want to do their daggone jobs. <clears throat> look, look. Well, around these parts, we have what's called politicians. Yes. We got two things. We got legislators. Yes. And regulators. Yes. Well, the regulators aren't doing their job. Look, look. Our politicians are just like, look, look. Well, fuck this. If you guys aren't going to do your job, we're going to do it for you. <laughs> so, so remember, <laughs> remember the... Remember that the, the 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 SEC hearing that I put on the on I pinned to the comments was about a month and a half ago, right? And that one politician was like, "Hurry up, well regulate." Well, they're not waiting anymore. Actually, they were yelling at the SEC guy. This one's a CFTC thing, but I guarantee you the regu- the SEC motherfuckers are about to get their their ass chewed out too. Well, they got their ass chewed out <laughs> at that hearing. Remember that? Hurry up. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> they got their ass chewed out, but I, I, I don't, I, I finally, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. I'm telling you, these politicians here in America are like, fuck this shit. We are just going to come up with the laws, and we're just going to tell the regulators what to do. So that's what this is about. Now, again, they're weighing the bill. This isn't done yet, but I want to talk tonight about these things. Just so you see where the, the headspace of the politicians are, right? You know what I'm saying? See, you, right? Like we see where the Europeans' head is now. Heads are now. They, you know, they want Europe wide, and they're even thinking of their own daggone euro coin for crying out loud, right? So you see where their heads are at. Now we see what America's. <laughs> yes, we see where America's heads at. Look, look. The politicians here are finally just, they're getting serious, right? Like I said, they yelled at the guy, the SEC guy, Jay Clayton, the chairman, yelled at him. And this guy right here, he's like, fuck all this. I'm just going to make the laws and let's see if it passes. So let's check this out. Let me get a little sip and then we'll look at it. (laughs) Right now, the regulators remember last year yeah, no one was complaining to the regulators, right? No one said anything to them. All right, yeah, Zucky Zuck Zuck comes out, says his thing, and now China's out. Yeah, now all of a sudden the politicians have passion for this, <laughs> right? Now all of a sudden it's priority number one, right? Now they're yelling at the regulators. The regulators are like, yeah, you guys didn't care when we didn't do anything last year. Oh, all of a sudden now, now we're the bad guy? <laughs> I love politics. That's how it goes, brother, right? Someone's got to take the blame. You know, it ain't going to be that politician. He's going to blame you. Pretend like he was thinking about this the whole time. What do you mean? This has been a national issue the whole time. Really? I never heard you talk about that before. Hmm. It's funny to watch your institutions of government, uh, you know, compete and complain and blame each other in different things, right? Anyways, as a forex trader, that's the shit I look at. All right, so look. U.S. Congress weighs a bill spelling out CFTC's crypto derivatives. Spelling it out. We're going to fucking spell it out for you, fuckstick. (laughs) You don't want to regulate? We'll spell it out for you. Look, look. And that's their legal right. They are the legislators. So, the U.S. Congress will soon vote on a bill providing new information about the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, authority over the cryptocurrency derivatives market. So, they're telling them, right? This is your authority. This is how you got to do it. Hey, fuck that shit. You're taking too long. <laughs> You're taking too long. Look. <coughs> He's... A provision in the 219 CFTC Reauthorization Act clarifies 
how the regulator could would collect information on digital commodities contracts and commodity swaps. So, you know, the CFTC, they do the futures and swaps and stuff like that. Um, they're the ones who regulate that stuff. Hold on. Excuse me. I have a little cold, man. Oh, my chest is congested. My nose is already. Shit. All right. It's not a bad one, though. Look. All right. So the bill is heading, is heading to the House of Representatives for a floor vote after being passed unanimously by the House Agricultural Committee, which, over, which oversees the CFTC. Oh, excuse me. So it, it has passed committee. Now it's going for the floor vote, meaning the whole Congress. So you know how, well, just in case you don't, how politics works is committees yap yap about something. And they come up with an idea. Boom, then they vote on it. So that's what they did. This guy came up with an idea. Hey, guys, I want a little crypto. Look, look, look. So they voted on it, the committee, and they were like, sure, let's do some crypto. Bye. So now it goes up to everybody to vote for. Right? So Pelosi's got to bring it up, and the whole house will get to vote for it now, okay? Um, if passed, the, the bill would be the, the first to place congressionally mandated Digital commodity specific requirements on the CFTC, congressionally mandated. In other words, we're fucking telling you what to do. <laughs> Congressional, we're telling you. Okay? That's what that means in a nice way of saying it. What's more, according to the provisions writer, Representative Sean Patrick Maloney, Democrat of New York. Look, look. If you're in New York, Maloney's your guy. Yo, you vote this guy back. He's got some good stuff going on. It has already become the first cryptocurrency derivatives legislation in history to make it past committee. All right, so it was in the committee. They voted. It passed it. Now we go to the floor vote. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to pass the floor vote. But if this was a bipartisan bill, in other words, if Republicans voted for it and the Democrats voted for it, did it say unanimously? Hold on, let me see. Oh, it did. Oh, it passed unanimously. Oh, 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 okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so that's how you got to read articles, brother. You got you to gotta reread sometimes. Look back. All right, my bad. All right, so it passed unanimously. That means all the Republicans and all the Democrats said, I, yes, we vote for it. Nice. So now it goes to the full floor for vote. Well, if the Republicans and the Democrats voted for it out of committee, that means on the floor vote, this should be a no-brainer. This should be good to go. I mean, it doesn't guarantee it, but it is way, I'd give it an 80% chance. Shamari, what percentage would you give that? Well, in my humble analysis and opinion, I'd give this an 80% chance of chassing. Pants of chassing. <laughs> chance of passing. Look. So, oh, and here's what he says right here. It's time for Congress to get smart about crypto and create an integrated approach to regulating digital currencies, Maloney said in a statement. Dang on right. Look, look. Yeah. All of a sudden, right, Maloney? You uh, didn't give a fuck about it last year. <laughs> yes. So this provision is an essential first step in our efforts <coughs> to close the gap in regulation of crypto assets in the derivatives markets. Fight manipulation and detect fraud. Yes, yes, of course it is. Of course it is. So the provision itself is short, saying the CFTC will adopt rules detailing the content and availability of trade and trader data and other information the Board of Trade must be able to access from contract markets underpinned by digital commodities. Uh, a nearly identical subsequent paragraph places the same requirement on swap execution facilities. So I think basically what they're saying is you just apply the same shit you do to the regular markets to this crypto stuff, right? Uh, get the trader data. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's sort of saying just do the regular stuff. And with the swaps, it's saying the same thing. In response to a request for comment, hold on. Right, so it, and it, and it places the same requirements on the swap guys. So, uh, in response to a request for comment, a CFTC spokesperson sent Coindesk a statement by Chairman Heath Tarbert, that's the CFTC chairman, who said he commended the Agriculture Committee on passing bipartisan legislation. Probably wondering, why is the Agricultural Committee doing the swaps and futures? Yeah, well, most swaps 
and futures are for agricultural goods here in America. All right? Pork bellies and oranges and shit. The sound regulation of, of, of our derivatives market, which sees more than $4 trillion in notional activity each day. Oh, yeah. Derivatives, baby. I told you. If, if, if there's ever something you should worry about in the, in, the, in the markets, a lot of you guys, you guys are a little paranoid. You're always telling me, Shamari, look, look at this, look at that. No, you know, settle down, buddy, settle down. If there's something you should ever worry about, it's the derivatives market. If the derivatives market ever crashes, <laughs> yeah, there is no saving it. There is no bailing it out. Do you know that the derivatives market worldwide has over is, is leveraged over 100 times all the money on earth? Yeah, motherfuckers. Seriously. How does that happen? Leverage. Leverage. No one controls the leverage. Yeah, the derivatives market has more money swooshing around all day, every day, trillions of dollars a day. More than 100 times all the money on earth. You could take every single dollar bill, every single nickel, every single penny from every human being on planet earth. Right? And say, look, let's bail out this market. It's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. Yeah, the derivatives market is over 100 times all the money on earth. Why am I telling you that? Oh, oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, look, $4 trillion a day just in uh, notional activity each day in America. That's the level. Yeah, and it happens worldwide. Yeah, the Brits, the Europeans, all of them, all of them, daily. If that ever crashes, there's no such, I'm just telling you this is a, I guess this is a side thing. This isn't a crypto thing. Just as a market guy, I'm telling you something. Yeah. If the derivatives market ever crashes, that's it. That's the end of economics as we know it. Yeah. Everybody's laid off. Fuck, you got to go hunt your own food. Yeah. Shit like that. You're going to have to plant your own garden and eat like that. Yeah, for real, real, real. Like, that's not, uh, you know, some sort of conspiracy, something, something. Everybody knows that. Like, if you're a market person, everybody knows that. That's why a lot of these derivatives guys, they go buy land in fucking Montana and Idaho and shit like that where they're away from civilization because they think if it ever crashes, <laughs> the cities will become a madhouse. Yeah, so they buy land out there. A lot of Wall Street guys. And they put these like, uh, you know, like tanks in the ground. Yeah, so their family and, and, and the, I don't even know what, they're, like a bunker, a bunker. That's what they're called, bunkers. Yeah, they put them in the ground so their family can live. Yeah, if Wall Street guys are doing that, that tells you. <laughs> Yo, shit. It's true, it's true. Right? That's true shit, man. If the, if the derivatives market... One of the brothers here, Justin, he showed us this chart last year. I think it was like Q1, Q2. Justin, if you're listening, yo, man, you got to drop that chart. That's your greatest hit right there. Next to Shut Up Wife, I'm about that whole life. That's the greatest one. Oh, yeah, by the way, if you're new here, that's the, you know, that's the slogan around here. Shut up, wife. I'm about that whole life. Yes, we haven't said that in a long time. But, yeah, he showed us a chart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Justin, man, if you have that chart. Fucking please tweet that shit so I can show these guys, man. Yes, it was on my old laptop, right? I'd show them tonight. Oh, yeah, guys. <laughs> there won't be an economy after that, if that ever happened. There is, it, yeah, there, there is no bailing that out. You could print all the money you wanted to bail that out. Yeah, well, the money would be worthless. <laughs> You'd have to have a truck, like a pickup truck full of dollars, you know, like, to buy one, like, can of Coke. <laughs> like that. Yes, like that. Uh, you know, in Germany, after World War One, yeah, people used to have wheelbarrows. Wheelbarrows of money <laughs> that they would take to the store. Yeah, to buy a loaf of bread and a, a fucking thing of milk. A wheelbarrow. If the derivatives market ever crashes, motherfucker, you're going to need a truck. A truck. You know, like a pickup truck full with money just to go buy like a can of coke <laughs> that's not funny actually i'm not even i don't even know why i'm laughing because it'll never happen but 
You never know. I mean, these things can cascade. That's what the fear was about the housing market, right? Because the MBS and the CDOs were in the derivatives market. And so that's why we really bailed out the banks really quick. So the CDOs and MBS didn't fully crash. MBS are mortgage-backed securities and CDOs are collateralized debt obligations. Yeah, if those crashed, that would have really been the end of Earth. Not Earth, but our economy. And that's why the whole too big to fail shit, it wasn't that they were too big to fail like we gave a fuck about them. Because we let, what's its name, fail? That was fine. It was that the, the, the derivatives market that these guys were in, if they failed to pay their derivatives, their leveraged derivatives contracts, the whole global system would have failed. And that's why we really gave all that money, right? It was because of the CDOs and the MBS. Collateralized debt obligations. Google that and Google MBS, mortgage-backed securities. Yeah, those are on the derivatives market. And if that failed, that would have cascaded the derivatives market and that's the end of the global financial system as we know it. Yes, yes. There you go. I'll teach you a little something. That's the truth. That's why people, why are we bailing out the banksters? We didn't bail out the banksters, buddy. We bailed out Earth. All of us. I mean, I know how to shoot. I got guns. I can go I can go hunt some food, but I don't know how you and your family are going to make out. <laughs> so, but all right. But that's some serious shit. But let's just get back to this crypto crap. So, uh, so what this guy said, the agricultural dude, oh, he has this politician. He said, look, the sound regulation of our derivatives markets, yes, it needs to be sound. If those fail, yeah, you better gather up the women and children. Look, marauding bands of bandits. Look, Mad Max style. The sound regulation of our derivatives markets would see more than four trillion in notional activities each day is critical to the health of the U.S. economy and the pocketbook of every American. You dang on right it is, he said, adding, I look forward to working with members of both parties in both chambers to see a bill through to completion. Bang, yours. And so if you want to, if you're so inclined, here's the bill right here. Here's the law. Come over here and read this. I like reading laws, actually, to tell you the truth. I read laws. Well, the parts that pertain to me. Because not every law, you know, you don't have to read the whole law. You have to read the part that pertains to you. So, like, Dodds-Frank came out. So I read the I read the Forex part. Yeesh. Obama. Motherfucker. <laughs> look, look. He said hope and change. But that was not the change I was hoping for. <laughs> We used to have 401 leverage. Then he gave me 50. But look, if you want to read the laws, here they are. Bang. All right. All right, that's it. Yeah. So America, we got one in the books. Out of committee. Bang. Heading to the full floor. Bang. Unanimously voted. Yes. Let's bang that even again. Let's bang that again. Look, look. Where is it? Where is it? Yes. What did that say? After being passed unanimously by the House Agriculture Committee, who oversees the CFTC. That's the Oversight Committee of the CFTC. Both Republicans and the Democrats got together in a moment of bipartisanship, unity. <laughs> Bipartisan glory. I don't know what you call it, but look, unity. And so this ought to pass the House. That ought to be good. And we'll see when it goes up to the Senate if this fucker Mitch McConnell, I like to call him Bitch McConnell, if Bitch McConnell brings it up for a vote, if he does, we should pass. So look, good stuff. Bye. Now, look, everyone's talking about this. This is the big story of the day. This is the big story of the day. Hong Kong XCC to release criteria on crypto exchanges. So they did release their stuff today. Hold on a second. Let me just do something. One second. One second, guys. One second. One second. All right. All right. Yeah, cause there was another article about this. I wanted to. I thought maybe that would be better, but hold on. I can't find it, and I don't want to waste your time. So look. <clears throat> Analyst. 
the Hong Kong SEC to release criteria on crypto exchange. So, as we all know, Hong Kong is in the grips of protests right now. Whatever. Uh, and China's letting it happen. Yes, they're not coming down with a heavy hand. As I thought they would. As I thought they would. Because, you know, you're letting these guys in Hong Kong go all nutty. Well, now your people on mainland China might think, oh, well, maybe we can just demand stuff now too, right? I thought the Chinese government would have come down a little heavier handed on these Hong Kong folk. Not that I want that. I'm just saying I thought they would. But anyway, what's good is, you know, China... From Xi Jinping's mouth himself, say crypto and blockchain, all good to go. Well, Hong Kong, and I'm going to read it to you here, but, you know, the Chinese, all right, let's read this first, and then, and then I'll yap yap, or else I'm going to give away the story anyway. All right, look. Hong Kong SEC to release criteria on crypto exchanges. Bang! Yeah. Look, according to Dovi Wan, founder at Primitive Ventures, the Hong Kong Securities and Exchange Commission is said to release a crypto exchange application guideline. Wan said, Hong Kong SEC will announce detail in about an hour regarding cryptocurrency exchange application criteria. Considering Huobi has already backdoored uh, listing listed uh, on HKX, this will definitely play them a huge favor to be first legalized cryptocurrency exchange. So, look, basically, bottom line is they're legalizing these exchanges now. So, China banned crypto exchanges last year. Yeah, well, now you're all pro crypto and everything, right? You're all pro blockchain now, right? So China came out with their stuff today. If you notice this, look at the time. Yeah, 7.19 a.m., November 6th. This came out like, I don't know, about an hour ago. And uh, yeah, so that's how you get the fresh news from Shamar. You get the fresh. So it's the best of the multiverse, fuck stick. Look. But, 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 but it's also the best because, you know, they explain shit. So, but seriously, though, but um, so the Chinese have not been able to access crypto in a easy way. They All right, all right, let's just read this and then I'll explain it. The decision of the Hong Kong SEC to establish a direction for local crypto exchanges comes after the introduction of a national blockchain initiative by the Chinese government. But, yes, by Xi Jinping, baby. Is this big for the global crypto market? Over the past two years, ever since the official imposition of a cryptocurrency trading ban by the government of China, most traders in the region are said to have moved into the Hong Kong cryptocurrency exchange market. So, all right. So, many Chinese investors trade cryptocurrencies through over-the-counter, OTC, direct from another guy, right? Trading platform is based in Hong Kong. By selling and, st uh, and purchasing stable coins like Tether with a slight premium. They got to pay a little extra. As said by Wan, the establishment of a clear guideline for crypto exchange applications could benefit exchanges that are used by Chinese investors like Huobi. She said Huobi is an effective Chinese exchange run by Chinese team locally in mainland serves primarily Chinese customers. They spent huge efforts to restructure into a foreign company after, quote unquote, foreign company, uh, after the 2017 uh, China crypto ban. And the cost of the HKX shell is not cheap too. So they, they, they put themselves into a shell company called HKX is how Huobi um, operates in China, right? But now with this thing, they're not going to have to do that. But it does give them a leg up in that they're first, right? Um, it would also grant crypto exchanges a strong legal basis to operate within Hong Kong, 
which could potentially solve banking services related issues cryptocurrency trading platforms have struggled to deal with. Yeah, banks don't want to give cryptos exchanges bank accounts. But now that you're regulated, all right, well, the bank will give you a bank account, right? Still, BitSpark CEO George Harrop said that the proposal has been out for a year and that it is not thought of as an important framework by local communities. So this guy's dissing this thing. I think it's great. So he said this proposal has been out for a year already. It's opt-in, only applies to securities and limited only to institutional customers. Anyone joining also needs insurance that doesn't exist. No Bitcoin exchange will be joining as Bitcoin is not a security. So he gives a couple little um, This is about it. I don't know. What do you say about it? Um, a couple of reasons. It's opt-in, right? So you don't have to do it. But you're going to want to do it because China just allowed their people to, to start coming. Um, he said it's only for institutional customers. Great. I don't give a fuck. That's what I want. I don't give a fuck about soccer mom and dad. And also needs insurance. I've told you about that. Everybody needs insurance, but the insurance will come. You know, it might not be today, but it will be there. So don't listen to that bullshit from that guy. So not just for Huawei. The guideline from the SEC is expected to positively affect most exchanges based in Hong Kong that primarily facil facilitate trades for investors based in mainland China. If the guideline is not restricted to institutional customers, as some analysts predict, and that's what this guy just said, yeah, but this is only for institutionals. I mean, I don't really care. I, I just want institutions to get here. I don't give a fuck about these. But I mean, China has so many people. I mean, it's a little different. I don't give a fuck about Americans. But China's got 1.4 billion people. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I'd like to see their, 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 their retail investors go. <laughs> America and, and Europe, I really don't give a fuck. fuck. Fuck the retailers. Just bring us to your institutions, but... Yeah, so that's a lot of retail money right there, brothers. <laughs> that's too much to give up. Look, it also means that as cryptocurrency exchanges in Hong Kong are allowed to maintain operations on a more stable footing with clarified regulatory frameworks, it will create a more practical environment for investors in China to invest in the asset class. And that's exactly it. China, right, they banned all these exchanges that whole time. Yeah, but... Hong Kong has had a couple guys brewing, has had a couple exchanges that have been going. So now that China's like, look, look, we're good with crypto. Look, look, we're good with crypto. Hong Kong's like, well, look, look, we're selling it. <laughs> Come get it, motherfuckers. And so, bye. It will allow, it's a more practical, where does it say right here? Say it right here. Right? It's a practical environment for investors in China to invest in the asset class. Look. So, <coughs> however, Chinese state-owned newspaper People's Daily yes. <laughs> reported on a column released on November 4th that the government is, vehement, is vehemently against speculation around crypto assets and that its positive stance toward blockchain development does not necessarily equate to crypto investment. And that's the truth. We've talked about it. China... China's stance is pro-blockchain, not crypto, right? I mean, Xi Jinping said the thing crypto is good now. And like I said, I think that that's why they come out with that list of 35 cryptos. They're not going to let their citizens, I don't think. This is just this is pure speculation, what I'm about to say. But as you can see right here, there are over 3,000. <laughs> Remember we did this last year, guys? There were like 2,100. Well, now there's over 3,083 cryptos out there yeah china's not going to allow all that to come in i believe this is pure speculation but i believe the reason china comes out with that 35 crypto list those are the 35 they're going to let the people in invest in like i know v chain's not on that list but v chain's already approved we read it so but it's going to be controlled uh and, and i guess what i'm trying to say is this China's not just going to let everybody and anybody just sell shit to their people. It's going to be a controlled rollout. If China knows that your blockchain is actually doing something, fine. They'll let their people invest in it. But if not, nah, dog. 
Like white papers? Nah, dog. All that bullshit, ICOs and that? Nah, 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 nah. But if it's established and doing something, they're going to be like, here, right? Just like the stock market, here. Invest in what you want, right? I think, I think that's completely speculation on my part. But we'll see. But I think that's how it's going down. I've said this before, but that's for new people. So look. Um, again, speculation. And that's positive stance with blockchain development. does not necessarily crypto. Right, the people's daily said. So the people's daily said, there is no doubt about the potential and the direction of the blockchain development. They love blockchain. Speculation has to be prevented. And through a competitive environment, space for blockchain development has to be open. So, like I said, I think they're going to allow for speculation. I think they're going to allow for investment, but only of those approved blockchains. They're not going to allow, I don't think, white papers and bullshit like this, ICOs and crap like that. The Chinese government is going to make an assessment of that distributed ledger technology provider's blockchain and its services, and they will allow their 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 citizens to invest in those but what's good about this particular story now bang bang let's get to the, the reality of what's really happening yeah man hong kong is about to unleash its exchanges its crypto exchanges and that allows mainland chinese people to invest in a regulated environment well the one guy said institutions but we'll see i don't know if he's right or wrong but it allows them to invest in a regulated environment um right away right China said it's good to go, so right away. Hong Kong is part of China, so bang, right? All right, well, we'll see how it all goes. So that's our little world tour for the day. Look, look. Bye. Here we got DP Entertainment. Soul Brother. Larry Brother, T Brother. Bang. Here. What do we got? Pomp, co founder and partner at Morgan Creek Digital. I write a daily letter analyzing crypto news for institutional investors. <laughs> Bye. All right, brother. Ricardo Tuto, yeah? Yeah, the Tuto guy. Bang. See you, brother. Sweetie. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Good. Bye. Yes. Yes. Thinking of coming see you soon. Maybe this month, even. Yes. Look, look. She said she got to stuff a bag. It's almost Christmas. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. Stellar. All right. Brendan C. Spy Lady. Bang. See you, lady. Bang. Chris B. Vizo. Bang. See you, brother. Or Chief B. Vizo. My bad. Miriam. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. What's Miriam talking about? In regard to what you said yesterday about any electronic platform or gadgets being not secure. The Florida police are using Alexa recordings as part of murder investigation. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. Well, they're trying to get access to it. I'm not sure if they're allowed yet. Look, Arge, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yes. Robbie Hardaway, see you, brother. Bang. What do we got? Oh, this son of a bitch right here. Look, look. Bye. Look, look. Bye. Look, look. Bye. Yeah. Got you. See you, brother. <laughs> hey, wrong guys. See you, brother. Bang. Poppy Wood, love you, brother. See, brother. Bye. Rob Ert, love you, brother. See, brother. Bye. Radster, love you, brother. See, brother. Bye. Oh, airdrop out. Bye, son of a bitch. He said, I do get where you're coming from, 777. Tron does need serious developers for growth and interest. In my humble opinion, I do believe a partnership with Samsung is a big step in the right direction making it easier for developers to come. We will see eventually. Otherwise, portfolio juggle indeed. Yes. Like I said, brothers, Q1, I'm doing a major juggle to get my last, my last army assembled for the final assault. Bang! Because I think it's coming next year. Look, look, Berg's big drop. Bang, bang! Well, every brother, bang, bang! There we go. <laughs> all right, filled the gap. All right, we already went through all that. All right, let's get one more Master Barber. But look and DC or DKCC83 bang all right look bang look look bang look all right so we did a little trip around the world um the EU's drafting laws yes so they would like a European wide crypto 
regulation. Yes, that's what you need. But also, yes, they're looking into a little euro coin. Interesting, interesting. We'll see how that goes. Bye. Uh, U.S. Congress proposes. Oh, yeah, yeah. This congressman here. So he proposed the CFTC crypto laws. It passed out of committee. Boom. Now it goes to the main floor of the House. Boom. Then it goes on to the Senate. And all they got to do is vote. And it's a bipartisan bill. It said, what did it say? It said it, said it passed unanimously. So I give that an 80% shot of, uh, of passing. And so yes, we could see some nice, I mean, at least on the CFTC front, crypto regulations coming in the near future. Q1 next year. Look. And then Hong Kong. Going to release their crypto exchange criteria. So that's good for uh, the exchanges that are already there. They're now going to be licensed, regulated, all that. And good for us in that China, well, owns Hong Kong. And so now that Hong Kong is going to regulate their exchanges, well, the Chinese citizenry, the one guy said it was only for institutions, but we'll see what it ends up being. But um, the Chinese citizens will now have safe, regulated, blah, 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 places to go buy their stuff. And that will be great. So, look, let's chill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Look, subscribe below, press the bell, and you will get automatic notifications when I do this show. The greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamara Clark. I love talking money. I love talking crypto. This is the favorite time of my day. So, thank you for having me in your home, and I'll see you tomorrow. Look, look, my name is Shamar Clark, and I'm always on duty. Bye. Yes. See you tomorrow. Yes. Over and out.